Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guests tonight are Italian filmmakers, Eugenio, Danielle, Emmanuel. How's it going, guys? It's great. Everything. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. It's a great pleasure for us. Yeah, um, I went and saw your film, your uh, dark fantasy medieval film, Juggernaut, at Whorehound Film Festival, which won uh, Best Production Design and Best Cinematography. Congrats, guys. Um, Whorehound is one of the best horror conventions in the States. Thank you. That's uh, really you know, This is our really all right, now let's talk about Juggernaut. Let's get into the cinematography. The cinematography through the whole film was beautiful and breathtaking. The cinematography is made by Daniele. I think Daniele, he's the best guy who can talk about cinematography. So let me ask him in Italian to talk about a little bit about cinematography and I will try to translate everything okay. for him. Dani. Allora, ti faccio una domanda in italiano, mi devi rispondere in italiano. Dal punto di vista della, della fotografia, come ti sei ritrovato, dato che stiamo parlando della vittoria del premio della, della migliore fotografia? Cosa ti puoi dire? Raccontaci un po' della fotografia. Ho cercato di sfruttare il più possibile la luce naturale. Infatti, come ben ricordate, abbiamo girato sempre a orari proibitivi, però insomma il fatto che... Eh, eravamo in tre ci consentiva per la maggior parte delle occasioni ci consentiva di eh, poter essere molto pignoli sotto questo aspetto quindi eh, eh, diciamo abbiamo sfruttato molto la, la luce naturale poi insomma per, per quanto riguarda gli interni eh, già a livello di, di location comunque eh, avevamo delle location che ci consentivano ecco di anche se aveva comunque pochissimi mezzi, abbiamo comunque sfruttato le, eh, le varie peculiarità insomma, di queste location per, per avere un risultato migliore. Oh. Uh, we always uh, we tried always to look at uh, we are looked for a natural light every time and uh, a big um, a big opportunity that we had is the fact that Tuscany is a really fulfilled by a, a natural atmospheres, natural locations where we had the opportunity to take um, the shooting time that where we shot. And uh, that was the main point of the start. How can I say it in English? Um, it was the main point of the start. We also looked to, we also tried to reach the great location that we had uh, and we looked for greatest light that we um, might achieve in that uh, location. And most of the times we woke up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. We were there at, uh, at a precise time before the sunrise. And uh, we looked for, we waited for the perfect light and we started to shoot i think probably just for an hour for you every day every day for the day of production we devo aggiungere una cosa io semmai eh abbiamo ho voluto giocare molto sul sul contrasto forte tra appunto ombre e luce molto forte invece soprattutto nella scena della 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 cripta oppure quando ti cali dal pozzo insomma c'è questi contrasti molto forti quindi volevo giocare molto d'atmosfera anche per quanto riguarda questa cosa qui his goal also was uh, uh, a high uh, high contrast between the light and the dark and uh, during um, not the natural light when we were at uh, in some kind of uh, interior location like crypts Uh, something else we also looked at uh, he also looked uh, he always looked at um, some kind of high contrast between light and between dark. and that was the main goal that we wanted to achieve and uh, another part uh, really important part uh, that we looked for is uh, for a great colorist as well because we shot on Sony Alpha A7 no so, so, uh, A7 4 
7.4. We shot on uh, Sony A7 IV and we looked. We also looked for a great uh, colorist that could uh, improve this kind of cinematography that we want to to reach. Like, like I don't know, like um, kind of um, red or Alexa. Because we are. Bye. Allora, che è vero che abbiamo eh, diciamo girato non con una cinepresa ma con una mirrorless però abbiamo tratto il vantaggio di poter sfruttare meglio le basse luci dato che non avevamo attrezzatura anche a livello di luci super possiamo dire così e abbiamo cercato di trarre il vantaggio dalla, dalla miglior sensibilità del sensore di una mirrorless mentre una, una cinepresa richiede molta più luce in realtà okay we we hadn't had um, uh, you know a cinema camera uh, a camera that is made for cinema so we had a mirrorless uh, and for this reason we we looked for uh, um i don't a uh, low light middle light uh, and we hadn't had um, even uh, really expensive uh, lights, like for the production, like um, the light that use um, um, corrente continua, come si dice? Uh, yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fault. That's a, that's a really hard to tra- to translate. How can I explain it? Uh, the, the light that the budget that we had for the lighting uh, was, was really low we we just had some kind of uh, basic lights and we we tried to reach the greatest goal that we that we might achieve with this kind of light so we are looked for the quality and the uh, the sensitivity of the sensor of our camera gotcha. and we 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 looked for uh, for sets we we tried to set up the greatest light for our type of camera because for um for um, a cinema to- a cinema camera a camera for cinema you all look for uh, for a much more light that that we that we might have on our set so th- this is uh, what happened to uh, what's our it's some kind of a fusion a fusion between uh, the two parts between the low kind of low budget lighting and a low budget camera um gave us the opportunity to have this kind of cinematography it was a really really hard one to achieve yeah it was like like I said, it was pretty cool, and I loved the coloring because there was a lot of red and blues in certain shots of the film now um let's talk about the film it's about this night. And I love how it's not in dialogue because you can um, imagine it in your mind in the venture. Kind of remind me like a live action Dungeons and Dragons adventure where you feel like you're with that knight, you know, and uh, he's taken his uh, loved one to try to bring her back with necromacacy with this book. And you can feel the pain and the love uh, this knight has for this woman. You can tell he was also like battered. And, you know, hurting when he was doing this journey to, you know, bring his loved one back. You can feel the emotion and tension through the visual effects of each scene in this film. Yeah, the, our goal was to explain this kind of story without any kind of dialogue, as you tell that. And this, this was for two main reasons. But first of all, was uh, for the fact that we want to bring this kind of atmospheres, this kind of uh, storytelling to an international point of view, because uh, we also looked at at some kind of cinema like uh, The Revenant uh, from uh, Inari too, and uh, like um, um, ah, Valhalla Rising, Valhalla Rising as well. And we are looking for this kind of atmospheres, and we want to to took this challenge with us to bring the story 
uh, to an international audience without just saying any kind of word. And that was really hard for us. But this, even for me, was also a challenge because as an actor, telling a story without any kind of dialogue is really hard because you need to keep your emotion really at a high level every time because you need you need expression, you need to explain what happened on screen, what happened at the point of a story without uh, without adding anything else. Yeah. And uh, the, the main point, the main point was for that we want to be as international as possible. That was the main part because we we also we want to how can I say it? We want to go all in with uh, with this kind of short because we want to turn it in a, into a feature film. So this this kind of choice to remove uh, dialogues was made for this kind of part and even for the fact that as as the fact that I am the producer of of the of juggernaut we need we need to cut off some budget so we we wrote a story with one character that needs to uh, need to complete his journey for for take back what he has lost and everything was set it up just for the fact that we had this kind of budget we had uh this hero that needs to bring his back his wife and everything else and we want to improve uh, or can, how can i say it? improve this this kind of story we need to mm, we need to focus all our budget inside uh, this uh, the opportunity that we have mm-hmm. for the moment and uh, i i was available just for all the time uh, the actress had something else to do the other actor has something else to do so we need to we need to create a story inside our availabilities as well so we we try to figure out how can we do it our best you guys did a pretty good job and uh you um played the uh, main character uh ricker and um how heavy was that armor you had to wear and plus being covered with blood most of the film um was that very hard having blood all covered around you with that heavy armor moving around while you're pushing uh everything everything was really hard thank you for the answer everything was really really hard i think that we are talk about 30 kilos mini minimum at less at less 30 kilos and uh, i we we shot sometimes we shot for 16 hours inside some kind of internal location so i i spent the whole time with with the whole armor on me and it was really really hard even for the physical part and also for the for for, for the sled for even for the sled but even for the psychological part because your mind you you had some headache your back is hurting and so it's really really hard and uh, it's really stressful i i had i had an actor um we we talk about juggernaut that's a funny part of the story <laughs> um, i talked with uh, with an actor about juggernaut he was so so happy about uh, about the the short thing he told me that yeah i want to be i want to be like you i want to be this i want to be that you can be a great part you can do this you can do that and we start talking about how can be heavy shot in this kind of scenes, this kind of character. And then he didn't take so much attention on how can this might be. How can you be before each shooting? How can you, how time you may spend just with this, just staying with armor, just waiting just waiting for another shot, for another kind of angle, from this angle, from another angle. So it's really frustrating. 
because everything was made by steel, just everything without any kind of props, any kind of plastic parts, you know, like like a cosplay. You know, everything was pure, pure steel. Even for the fact that we want to achieve that kind of uh, uh, pain from from this hero, even for the acting, this helped me really a lot. Feel feel this kind of uh, real steel, real cool around me. Even for the weather, because it was really really cold outside. And even for the for the metal part for all this armor, so everything was really really. Bad. I think at the end at the end of the of the final days at the end of the fighting scene, both of the directors got on. Um, how can you call it when you have uh, when you are uh, ill? You got you you got uh, you have um, uh, your temperature is really high, so you got you got ill. <laughs> You got sick. You got influenced. Yeah, yeah sick, right. Yes. Yeah, they they got sick. Both of them <laughs> after that because it was, the the atmosphere was really um, humid. How can I say it? humid? Or better was a dusty. Yeah, it's really dark. Was really, everything was really dusty, really cold. Everything was really the humidity was really high, so it was really painful. Even because. Juggernaut. It's not only the the story, but everything what is behind the story is a juggernaut itself. Is another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Awesome. When you were in that heavy armor, um, who did the fight? Uh, clogger the fight. The fight scenes. Those swords had to be pretty heavy when you guys were clashing. Who did the choreography and the fighting? We had some uh, stunts coordinator, uh, Filippo Coletti, Dylan Olivi. They they had some kind of academy, some kind of school of uh, sword fighting near our city. Medieval. Yeah. Yeah. Medieval. medieval. Yeah, it's a medieval. It's a medieval kind of, uh, kind of um, sword fight. Uh, they they have this kind of school. We are from Biarritz, when half an hour from here. They have this kind of school, and we contacted them. We reach we reach them. We ask them for for this choreography. We we tell them what we had in our mind uh, about our story. We talk about the story. We talk about about the location, and they sent us some some videos where they. Um, just play this kind of this this choreography, and then uh, with another actor, with Nicolo, we set it up uh, outside uh, outside our home, and we tried it up uh, three four times before shooting. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's now, uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Eh, dicevo se lì puoi dire anche del fatto che comunque noi l'abbiamo chiesto una coro- cioè un combattimento che per necessità nos- nostre dovesse essere breve e, e niente perché appunto non- cioè perché eravamo in questo posto dove non potevamo colpire le colonne perché erano veramente antiche e se poi anche il fatto che abbiamo usato sia spade vere che fumi ah sì anche un'altra cosa io, scusami anche che la location era originaria del 1200 che è una cosa interessante uh, yeah, well, the the guys just said to me that um, the the original the crypt is from the 12th century, so it's a really a really was a really dangerous part where we set up a fight because the um, uh, the, the property said to us that we must that we must pay the much more attention. M- as we can to the columns, you know. So we we want to take care of it. We don't need we 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 just need to pay the attention at them without leaving any kind of scratch at them. Because if we if we had just a little scratch, that was a really a really that was a really a mess, a total mess for us. So. 
uh, we fight the main, the main part, the fast part. When we set the choreography inside the crypt, we played, we we shot it it with the fake, with the fake swords. So we had this fake swords made by. It's a wooden sword, just a prop, and we we fight with with the them, and then uh, when we just stay staying on point staring at each other when we act we we had the real starts now let's talk about the awesome film score in the film the uh the score in the film uh, made the atmosphere in certain scenes of the film about the main character you know going through this journey um yeah who did the um score on that film it kind of had like an eerie medieval vibe to it you mean you mean for for the score for the score recording? Yeah, for the music. Yeah, the music score. Yeah, yeah. yeah the music of the score was made by Diego Guarnieri. That was the final part of the post one, one of the final parts of the of the post production because um, everything was made in post production, even the real sound. As Stefanica told you, because uh, we watched we we watched uh, even the podcast we heard. Um, the score was one of the final parts because we hadn't had any kind of idea of how can we explain the story with the music. And we gave everything to Diego, and Diego did an incredible job. Um, incredible job that we are really proud about it. We reach, um, he, he, he took uh, some notes, some atmosphere some theme yeah. for this short you can feel for, it for this story. and was a really unbelievable unbelievable part because it's the score is really painful it's really loneliness mm-hmm. it's really darkness darkness dark, yeah. yeah i got the darkness dark, from it yep we spent i think a couple of months for the score for the score yeah we spent 6 months for the whole post product for the whole post production and the score was one of the funniest part because the, I think that the heavier part to score, the most difficult part was the scene where I dragged this lad on the top on the top of the mountain. That was that was the most difficult part for scoring because uh, we, as director, as producer, we tried to for post production, pre production for. Each part of this short, we work simultaneously all together. And uh, at the end, um, at the end of the production, uh, each of us just listen for the listen to the score and give his personal opinion. And then we are looked for, you know, like a, like in democracy, we look for the measure for for, for the point that um, made us feel all of free comfortable with our choice you know so most of the times we spend a lot of a lot of time for uh, for that particular scene because emanuele told uh, each time told to told to us that it was so epic so we we are looking for so something like more intimate like more, more low every time he said to us no guys i want it a little bit lower, a little bit lower, less epic, less epic, because it's, it, this is a private story. This is an intimate story. This is not like a, a fight between, uh, between, uh, I, I don't know, between two states, you know, two nations. It's like an intimate story, so don't go epic. Because the first time, the first time that we, that we listened, listened to the, the score was a really epic score. And then after changing and changing and changing and so on, we reached this kind of of um, loneliness, this kind of like little epic part because it's not not so epic. Hey, that, hey that's a good way to explain it, you know, because the music did feel a little bit dark. Um, one more question for you guys. One of my favorite scenes was where you were uh, dragging, you know, uh, the love of your life up the slope and there was like this fog and wind that came down and covered it 
it gave you that, like a paranormal, you know, like eerie type of feeling, you know, where you're feeling it. I love that shot. That shot was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mostly, uh, most of the things. I think that you need to leave it to Emanuele and to Daniele because uh, we were there. We were there for some reshootings or um, for the scene that I dragged the sled on top of the mountain. And after that, after the the, the sound, uh, tramonto, after the sunrise, sunset. after the sun. After the sunset, we were there for shoot the part with the fire. We were in the same campfire. location for with the campfire scene. We we were in the same location. We just was there, just 12, 20 minutes from there, twenty minutes from there, right be, right behind that that hill. The this fog was a really really lucky situation because it was really lucky situation because. Uh, we were there for reshooting the part, and uh, at one moment we realized that we be, that the fog comes into our, uh, into us, and we we figure out that we had a really really sunny sunny fraction of time for shot for, for for have this shot. So we started to running to that point uh, with the sled, with everything, with my armor on my body, everything else because. Most of the time, we 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 were on set just three of us, so it was really painful, even for reach the point for sh- for the shoot for the shot. And um, that was probably five o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon, and the the light that you can see in the sky is not the moon, is the is the is the sun because it was filtrated by the fog. So it came out like this kind of atmosphere that was a pure luck, and we are looking for it. We are looking for each time that we were there for shooting, you know, with the guys, Emanuele and Daniele, also um, both some kind of um, uh, thermal equipment that they allowed them to shoot during the raining, part, raining days, and uh, bad atmosphere, and never of this ever happened. So for for this kind of part, we were really unlucky. But that scene, that was I think is something like blessing. I don't. That was a pure luck. Nothing else. Well, I mean, like I said, it but was it was it was like when the, when the luck uh, meet the opportunity. Or meet a great product, a great pre-production, something magic might happen. So I think at that point, the magic happened. <laughs> oh, it, it sure did. Like I said, it was beautiful. I thought it was you know a great you know panoramic uh, shot, which is beautiful. Um, have you guys thought ever about making this into like a feature film? We are right now. We are uh, writing. We are in the writing process right now, and we want. We we are. If you want, if you want a little secret, we are. We are wrote down. We wrote wrote it down. Wrote down almost eighty pages of the script of the feature film. Wow! Eighty pages. Right now, yeah. Right. Uh, today we reached eighty because we we met. Every week, and we are looking on how can we develop the story, how can we write it down. We started to writing, I think, at the end of October. And for the fact that we are not screenwriters, we are writers, we we had inside our team a screen a screenwriter. We uh, he she is um, Julia, and each week we met with her with her and we talk about the story we talk about the plot we talk about the characters we talk about the subject and step by step we, we reach it out how can we develop this kind of story into a feature film we added more characters we added more locations but, um, more nothing hard. else I can't tell you at the moment <laughs> <laughs> because I think the guys might kill me and uh, <laughs> we I think that probably at the beginning of the following month, we will have uh, the, the script ready 
uh, I'm as the first draw. I'm as the first draw, and after that we will we will look for some production companies that. Let's see what might happen. Let's see. We are um, we are ready for sure. No, we are not ready for sure at the moment. But we we want to. Our goal was to achieve our opportunity for for a feature film, and with Juggernaut, we thought that this might be that that kind of that kind of opportunity. This kind of opportunity, because uh, a lot of times you meet. Uh, a lot of short films, and uh, most of the times, nothing happened, nothing changed. We think that we think this kind, of, even for our friendship, even for our um, passion for the cinema, for this kind of cinema, we thought that this might be that part, that that way, that that opportunity that we are looked for a long time. All right. Thank you uh, so much, guys, for coming out of your busy schedule. Share it. I'm looking forward to see a future as a future film. Um, what's your guys' next project, and where can everybody find follow you on social media to see what you guys are doing next? Ok, ragazzi, quali sono i nostri prossimi progetti? E come vi chiamate su Instagram? Che, rag- che qualsiasi persona che sta guardando questa diretta possa trovarvi. Ok, allora io il mio contatto è personale Emanuele 95 Ricci e comunque per, per, il, per il corto c'è eh, la pagina di Juggernaut che è juggernaut.demovie e beh, progetti futuri sono cioè ci stiamo buttando tutti sulla sceneggiatura del film che ormai siamo per l'appunto come ha detto già noi siamo quasi arrivati alla fine volevo aggiungere che una delle perché io comunque sono fan più dell'horror che, che del fantasy in per sé e per appunto una delle grandi ispirazioni per il film eh, è Alien e, e niente volevo aggiungere questo perché comunque ecco il progetto futuro il film insomma si sta puntando a quello al 100% ok so what about Emanuele Emanuele if you want to reach out his Instagram account is Emanuele 95 reach him for Instagram account and he also said that if you want to add uh, and follow our short film adventure or even our feature film adventure you can add us you can follow us uh, on Instagram uh, through our short film page Juggernaut Doc short, short film and after that he also wants to add that he's uh, he's not a real fan of fantasy film but he's a real fan of horror film and uh, once of the part that he wants to add that the feature film uh, inside the feature film uh, he personally adds some kind of inspiration uh, from alien by ridley scott directed by ridley scott so uh-huh. this is his personal point of view because he's the guy that want to talk about uh, horror scenes he also drew horror scenes he, he wrote horror scenes for us uh, and daniele is more uh, fantasy part so for this reason uh, we we take place all together for a dark fantasy so the horror meets fantasy <laughs> daniele meets emanuele <laughs> Hey, that's pretty good. I I like him even more because he likes horror. Horror's my favorite by far, and then followed by uh, action and sci-fi. But horror is the top, man. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. And you Italians, you Italians have some great horror. You guys make some crazy great horror films, man. I love Italian horror, man. Anything new from Italian horror, I have to watch it because you guys are crazy. Yeah, I think I, thank you very much, and we will try to we will try through passion, through love for cinema. We will try to bring our love, our point of view for 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 the international market with our little film. Yes, My, we'll future feature film. Yeah, that's pretty and awesome. For the, for Daniele, if uh, you want to add him. Uh, Dani, come, come sono i tuoi contatti per Instagram? Allora, eh, d- eh, ma mi sentite? Eh? Perché sì, sì. ok. Da- Daniele.ricci.87 
Okay, for Daniele, if you want to follow him on Instagram, it's Daniele at Richie eighty seven eight seven. All right, thank you so I much. Go ahead. Yeah, most of the things. Una delle altre ispirazioni per il corto, insomma, è stata anche la serie di Dark Souls, che è un videogioco, però è una cosa insomma interessante da da aggiungere. As I told you, Daniel is a real fan for dark fantasy. Uh, even everything, what is fantasy from the world, and he want also. He just added me the point, the fact that he took some inspiration from Dark Souls video games for even for the future, even for the short film, and even for the cinematography as well. This I added by. Let me add it by myself. That's pretty good. And like I said, thank you so much. It was a blast. Um, I kind of like this. It was kind of neat, you know, to hear uh, half the interview in, you know, uh, Italian and English. It just made it so unique. But I want to say, you know, thank you so much, guys. I hope that you, that you spend a great time with us because my English is not good as well um, as I want. <laughs> so I'll try to, to do my best. Uh, and uh, I hope that we that we spend a great time together. We did, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do next. Um, everybody have yeah. a, everybody have a group. Maybe, maybe in the following in the following years we will meet all together and go around maybe with a future film. Yeah, I would That's love to. Fun. I would love to see you guys come to the states to some horror film festivals. You guys would like it because in the states, oh, horror's real huge, man. We love our horror over here. That's all I have to say. <laughs> from everything i mean like i said you know i love italian horror i love asian horror i love it all man <laughs> yeah. but in-